Northwestern finished the season 8-4 and four overall and 8-1 and one in conference play. The Wildcats are looking for their ninth Big Ten championship and first since 2000. Coach, if you could, give us some quick opening comments, and then we'll open the call for media questions. Well, it's a privilege to be on this call. I'm incredibly proud of our young men, uh, the way that they persevered, improved, and earned the privilege uh, to represent the Big Ten West in the championship game. Um, it went perfect 6-0 and in the West Division. First time that we've ever swept the West and, uh, you know, won 15 out of our last 16 Big Ten games. And, uh, you know, very proud of them, uh, obviously, for getting it done in conference play and doing it with the best graduation success rate in the country. So it's a special group. Uh, our senior class has got 40 wins, which ties the program record. And uh, their 26 Big Ten wins over the last four years and it is the most in a four-year span. So, uh, you know, the group collectively, I think, has really improved. Uh, very proud of our staff and the way that we've stuck together. And uh, now we've got a huge, huge challenge in front of us against an incredibly well-coached, incredibly talented football team in the Buckeyes. So with that, I'll uh, answer any questions. Thanks, Coach. Let's take questions from the media at this time. If you have questions, please hit the star one or touch tone phone. The first question is from Bill Rabinovich of the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, uh, Pat. When you guys were 0 and 3 after, or you were 1 and 3 after non conference play, if somebody, if somebody would have said you'd run the table from then on and, and win and be the Big Ten West representative, what would you have said? Well, Bill, I would have said that, you know, we went to work. You know, we you can only control the controllables. And, and um, you know, if you went back and watched, uh, especially the Akron and Duke game, you know, we beat ourselves. We didn't play very well. We didn't coach very well. We didn't execute. And, uh, you know, it was very disappointing. And, you know, I think our, our leadership really stepped up. Um, they just kept grinding, kept working to get better. And, um you know, the credit uh, credit all goes to our players. You played Ohio State very tough a couple of years ago. How much uh, of a benefit do you think that will be that you guys, you know, have the confidence you know that you can play with Ohio State because you did it two years ago? Well, we lost, right? Yeah, it was a very close game. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter if it's close or not. I mean, you know, we, we work our tails off to find a way to win. And, you know, the first thing we did, like every game, we came back and looked at things where the – Thematic issues, did we have wrong personnel in? Did we make wrong checks? You know, did we did we, you know, execute the game plan? How do we play fundamentally? You know, you look at all those things and you know, I, I you do that after every game. So um, you know, obviously we're a different squad this year and so are they and you know, they're one of the best teams in the country for a reason. They're incredibly well coached and, and incredibly talented. So, you know, I we had some guys that or on um, you know the seniors that played in that game, even maybe some guys were freshmen, but uh, or, or, or excuse me, juniors that were were freshmen that year. But um, you know we're gonna have to have our best week of preparation and play our cleanest game to be able to compete. Great, Pat. Thanks, buddy. Your next question is from Adam Ludenberg of ESPN. Hi, Pat. I know you guys have been a little shorthanded in the secondary the last few weeks. Uh, do you have any sense of uh, that group's health going into this game? Yeah, you know, we're early reports. I hope to get everybody back uh, that we've had out, you know, but we'll see how the week unfolds. And, and how, I mean, regardless of who's out there, how much stress does this uh, passing attack put on a, a secondary with Haskins and all the weapons Ohio State has? Well, every every skill guy can score by just catching a hitch, you know, or, or every guy in the backfield just has to make one guy miss and he can take it to the house. And, uh, you know, Dwayne is, is uh, so efficient. Um, you know, almost thrown for 70%, uh, 41 touchdowns, seven interceptions. That, that, that ratio is just absolutely incredible. So, um, yeah, we're going to have our hands full. There's no doubt about that. Hey, thank you, Fitz. Yeah, you bet. Your next question is from Team May of the Columbus Dispatch. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, I choked up there, Pat. Thank you very much. Uh, when you look specifically at what kind of came around for your team after that start that you were talking about, was it concentration? I mean, you know, what, what just kind of like came right as you watched it unfold in front of you? Well, I think it's leadership. You know, I think our, our, our captains and our leadership council and our seniors 
uh, we're, we're not going to allow the season to, to go the direction that those two games, you know, went. Yeah. And I thought we really improved, um, really from the Michigan game on. You know, I thought we came out of our bye week, you know, a much improved football team. And um, I, I really don't think it's anything magical. I just think the kids rolled their sleeves up. They went to work and they, you know, we talk around here a lot about an improvement mentality. You know, you, you've got to try to improve every single rep every single day, no matter what it is you're doing in football, academically, in life. And, um, you know, obviously this group, uh, you know, took on that attitude and, and approached each day that way. And, um, you know, I think that, that's been the key. It's been nothing nothing magical. Yeah. And, and the other thing, I mean, you know, getting to a conference championship game is a, an accomplishment in its own right. Uh, how do you how do you kind of let yourself and even your players kind of enjoy that situation of what they've accomplished? But you know, but knowing there's a task at hand, if you follow my drift uh, there, you know, there used to be no conference championship game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, no, absolutely, I do. I understand exactly what you're saying. And, you know, I think with us clinching the West a couple of weeks ago, I I I think that that euphoria is kind of coming on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks past and. Um, this group's been really focused since then. I, I was really pleased with the way they approached the last two weeks of, of preparation, and, and um, you know, I, I thought they uh, they handled their business the right way. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll have a great week. You know, it's this is going to be a huge challenge for us. We understand that. You know, it's you know, we've now this will be our third top ten team that we've played this year, um, and uh, you know, they, they've. Uh, They've all had the same challenges. You know, the, the talent speaks for itself. It jumps off the tape, and the coaching obviously mm-hmm. is as good of a staff as, as we'll go against, uh, you know, all year. So we're going to have our hands full. And, and one other quick thing is find a way to win. I mean, that seems to be y'all's, y'all, y'all's uh, uh, mantra or your bailiwick. I mean, is that, is that would you say that too, that y'all have found ways to win as opposed to just maybe smearing people? <laughs> I've been here a long time, brother. I, I don't know how many smears we've had. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, we're a white-collar school with a blue-collar mentality as a football team. You know, that's who we're always going to be as long as I'm the head ball coach here and I'm honored to have the role and feel privileged. But there's, there's no real secret sauce. We just try to play fundamentally sound. We try to play great team football. And, uh, you know, there's a brotherhood here that these guys laid on a line for each other and, that's a special group to, to be their head coach for, and I'm, I'm very honored to do it. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Sure. If you have a question, please hit the star one and touch the phone. Your next question is from Dan Murphy of ESPN. Hey, Chris, I know you mentioned kind of just going to work after that non-conference season. Um, you guys have done that a few times now. I'm wondering if, if this year there was a particular – practice the film session or game where it felt like that work was going to pay off and you guys were back where you needed to be? You know, I, I think probably a catalyst for confidence was probably that two-minute drive that we had against Nebraska offensively. You know, I, I think that was, you know, we, we obviously uh, didn't play excellent that whole game, but we had a chance, you know, obviously to, to win the game and, and that drive, I, I, I think really helped from a confidence standpoint for our offense and, and I think for our squad. Um, but, you know, we've, I, I just think it's, it's been almost overly simplistic. It, it hasn't been real complicated. It's just been a, just a grind, and that's what the guys have embraced. And they got, obviously, a, a huge opportunity in front of us, and it's wrapped up with this, you know, huge challenge. So, um, you know. We got to we got to put a great week together, and we got to play as clean as we ever have. The fact that they've they've been through that grind after a couple early season losses, your your veterans have been through that grind after a couple early season losses, and have seen things turn around and, and seen that pay off. How much was that a help in, in getting those guys to put in the work they needed to? Oh yeah, I mean momentum is key, right? And and winning cures a lot of ills. <laughs> and. Um, you know, you, you can't get blinded by it, though. And, and you know, we're, we've got a lot of work to do still, you know, to try to squeeze everything out of the squad. Um, you know, and, and uh, that, that starts and ends with us as coaches. So, 
you know, right back in this morning looking at the things we can do better and, and how we can give our guys, you know, solutions and answers uh, schematically and fundamentally as we start the week tomorrow. And and then, uh, you know, we're, start working on a game plan to try to find a way to compete. So, um, you know, it just is what it is, man. I think I think winning cheers a lot of ills. Thanks. Jeff, you bet. Your next question is from Rob Aller of the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Pat. Hey, like you said, Hello. you've done this. Hey, like you said, you've done this a long time. I'm just curious, as coaching challenges go, where does that consistency, getting a team to play consistently at the same level from week to week to week, where does that rank? I would think pretty high, but that may be maybe the challenge. Yeah, you know, our number one objective each week is to consistently prepare for victory. And I, I think you've got to really take each um, each day as its own entity as you prepare. And we've got a pretty, um, I don't know, like everybody, we've got a routine here that we go through that we we think gives us an edge. And uh, it's not anything magical, but it takes guys believing in it and buying into it. And, um, you know, we tweak it every year. and, and um, you know, this year I, I think the group is really, really bought in. You just that one percent better every rep, that that improvement mentality. And um, you know, I know we haven't smeared anybody on the earlier question, but uh, I, I, I think we we just we just grind it out. And um, you know, we, we have we have a group of guys I think love to play for each other, and, and that's uh, that makes a lot of fun. And related to that, do you, do you believe it's a real thing, this this idea of playing down to the competition or playing up to the competition where consistency is related, if you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, I don't I don't think that's the issue here. I, I mean... Not in this game particularly, but... No, yeah, no, sure, no, I understand. Um, you know, I, I think when people, you know, especially... Um, you know, a lot of Big Ten play that we've played. I mean, we, we've taken everybody's best shot. And it's, you know, I've seen this thing change now from when I was a player here in the early 90s and the 90s when we were everybody's homecoming date. And uh, everybody chalked it up as a win. You know, now where we get everybody's A game. I mean, it's it's, um, it's been really interesting and, and uh, fun to, to watch this thing turn and flip. So, you know, I, I just think the teams play really well and really hard against us. And, um, you know, we talked, you know, there was probably a certain point probably back, you know, when I was here with Randy, when you could kind of, as an assistant, when you could kind of feel us going from, uh, you know, being a, being only a hunter to being hunted. And it was, you could just, you could just feel it with the way teams played against you. And again, it's got nothing to do with this week, but if that's not making any sense, you, you can just, we, we take everybody's best shot now. And, and uh, you know, it's a great place to be in as a program, but you got to bring it every day and you got to bring it every game. And when you don't, you're going to get beat. And very rarely, at least in my time, have we beaten ourselves. You know, we've had reasons why in the past, maybe we haven't had success this year. You know, two of our non conference losses were because we beat ourselves. And that, you know, that's just infuriating to me. And so, you know, you just instead of focusing on the negative, use it as motivation, and that's the guys didn't get better. Is part of that because you play quote inferior team? Is that what's maddening? Is that that level does drop off? Not necessarily. I mean, we lost to, to Notre Dame what, by ten points. I, I don't think they're inferior. Uh, we lost to Duke, who's a bowl team. At, you know, at the time when we played them, they were playing very, very well. And then, you know, we threw two pick sixes and fumbled the ball in the end zone and gave Akron, you know, 21 points um, and still had a chance to win the ball game. So, uh, you know, and then against uh, the Wolverines, you know, obviously we made some mistakes in the second half that were, were, were deadly. So um, I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so at all. Um, but I guess if you lose a team from the MAC or, you know, a couple of years ago we lost the FCS team, you know, we, we just – we beat ourselves in those games, and that's that's more infuriating than anything than anything because that, that's something that we can control. And when you don't do that, it, it doesn't matter who you play. You can't be two teams on any given Saturday. Thank you. You bet. Have a great week. 
Okay, next question is from Austin Ward of Leather Monroe. Hey, Fitz, when, uh, when Irvin was on here before, he talked about the respect he had for the program you have going there and then a, a friendship that you two might share. Is that just a product of you two coaching in the league together, or is there a relationship that predates him coming in here? What's, uh, what, what are the ties there between the two of you? Yeah, no, Coach and I got to know each other, you know, quite well. Um, obviously, as he came into the league, um, I, it, it coincided with me becoming our AFCA, American Football Coaches Association trustee, so I represent the coaches uh, on our national uh, board. And Coach Meyer is, is very involved and very engaged in, you know, trying to positively impact our game, the student-athlete experience, and uh, in the Big Ten Conference, and uh, I, I appreciate and I applaud him for his his candor, his willingness. Uh, I think he's incredibly well thought out in uh, the way he articulates his feelings, and I think he understands uh, that as coaches we can make a big difference, and uh, not just in in our in our own programs, but in the conference and the student athlete experience. In, in, in college football, and uh, so we started, you know, started that way because I always reach out to the new head coaches as they come into the league and, and let them know on the the rep, and if, if they need anything, let me know. And you know, I, I, I think uh, you know from that standpoint, then we started a relationship, and uh, um, you know, it's kind of moved forward from there, um, and uh, get a chance to see each other like last year at the. Uh, Fiesta Bowl function, I think uh, myself and Stacy and, and uh, Shelly and, and Urban Ed, I think we attended together. Um, when my recollection is correct, I don't know if you know the season, but, you know, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a ton of respect. Uh, I, I think when you, you, you run your program the right way, and, and that's how we obviously feel about Coach Myers' staff and his program, too. You two seem to be, at least for the Big Ten, the most willing to speak up about changes that you want. And I don't, I, how often do you think you guys see eye to eye? Do you want the same things moving forward? Or is there uh, times when you guys are sorting out maybe some differences there as well? Uh, you talking about myself and Coach Meyer? I'm sorry. Yeah, it seems like you two are both willing to other oh. the playoff or player safety or anything else, but you guys yeah. are willing to put your put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't recall um, – yeah, I, I think any time we have, especially conference-wide discussions, I, I, I think the the dialogue is more collectively than individually. Um, and, and I think it's really good. I think it's, you know, again, I've been in this league now for a long time, and, and this particular role, like I said, since Coach Meyer has been the head coach at Ohio State, um, I think this is a, a greater group of coaches that, 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 that we've had in the league. And I think everyone's care and concern is at a high level. I don't recall Coach Meyer and I either one way or the other. I think it's just the, the natural and normal discussions. Great. Thanks, Fitz. Yeah, you bet. Have a wonderful week. Your next question is from Bill Bender of Sporting News. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Um, I just wonder, you know, the way it's decided has obviously changed since you were a player, but I, you know, the value of a conference championship um, – do you ever worry or wonder how that will change in the future with uh, the focus continuing at this sport, continuing to gravitate toward the four-team playoff? It seems like more people want to talk about the playoff than the conference championship game. Yeah, Bill, um, first of all, I'm just, we're, we're honored to lead the Purple to Indianapolis. You know, I mean, I, it's, uh, it's a big deal for us. When the West, this was a step in the hurdle we hadn't gotten over and, and how to get over it. I think gives great evidence uh, to our plan and our process and the way we run our program. So I'm proud of our guys and incredibly proud of our young men and, and, and our staffs. You know, I think it's great right now that the, the games, every game matters in college football. And I think these conference championships, you know, obviously will have a huge influence on who makes the final four. And, uh, you know, from a school that maybe is a historical um not compared to a historical half or, you know, uh, I, I like the fact that you have every opportunity uh, to win your way into the discussion. And, you know, we, we obviously didn't get it done on the field, but if we obviously had a few more wins, this game could be significant for our program. 
uh, talking about the college football playoff. So, um, you know, I, I think we've got to take a hard look. You know, how do we, you know, I know Division One football doesn't have the expanded you know, playoffs or, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, that maybe some other divisions in the NFL have, but we've got to really think hard. Um, if we're going to change and add more teams, you know, I think we're at a tipping point from the standpoint of uh, the young man, from a health and safety standpoint, from a number of games. Um, and I, I wouldn't see conferences wanting to get rid of the conference championships and or relinquish any conference games. So, you know, I don't know how we're going to head forward. I haven't, I haven't seen um, anybody articulate how you add more than, than what we have right now. Uh, and still keeping every game significant and protecting the bowl system, which I think is a great reward to all the teams that have a successful season. Thank you. David. Your next question is from Bill Rabinovich from the Columbus Dispatch. Yes. Um, I don't know how much of a deep dive you've been able to do on Ohio State yet, but just from whatever you've seen so far, what, what's your biggest concern about having to play them? Everything. <laughs> uh, they're, they're massive up front on the offensive line. Um, like I said, the skill positions on offense. Um, you know, everybody's the guy that can score by catching a hitch or a slant. You know, Dobbins and Weber can take it to the house by missing a tackle. And, and, and Dwayne Haskins is as efficient and explosive of a quarterback as we've seen. The tight ends jump out to me, too. I've been really impressed with Farrell and Barry. They both are, are very, very impressive um, on video, on defense. You know, I mean, this this front is big. They're physical. They're, they're athletic. You know, Young and Landers, um, uh, Jones, Cooper, and then they roll their second wave through. Um, you know, really dynamic, explosive. Uh, the linebacking core, you know, we knew tough in recruiting. And, uh, you know, a local kid here uh, in Chicago land, and he's a heck of a football player. Got to know Pete Warner, also in recruiter in recruiting. And, uh, you know, Harrison, to me, is really athletic. They do, they do some fun stuff. I love what Coach Gianno's doing schematically. The back end has got, you know, it's just it's, it's all NFL talent. It's, it's elite-level guys. And, you know, it's, it's uh, a younger group than maybe we saw a couple of years ago. Um, and they're really long, they're really athletic, and, um, you know, they, they, they obviously uh, are, are very, very talented. Then you watch the kick game, and that's where that's where the talent jumps out to you, the depth of the talent, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, they're fast and physical in every unit. You know, the punt game is ridiculous. I mean, you watch that Michigan State game, and, and Christian won that game you know, with the execution. So, um, you know, we're going to have our hands full. We're going to have our hands full. And Michigan obviously had the number one ranked defense in the country, and Ohio State made them look slow. Uh, how much of a concern is just Ohio State's overall team speed and whether you can keep up with that? Uh, huge. <laughs> huge concern. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know, this is uh, – um, a very incredibly talented football team, and, and Coach Day did a phenomenal job in the offensive staff. You know, getting the formation variations, you know, running different mesh concepts, and, and uh, taking advantage of, of uh, Michigan's aggress- aggressive, uh, you know, press man. And, and, uh, and Dwayne, you know, made some big time throws. Uh, they look like real routes. They're called we call them crescent the route uh, that they got the backs, you know, matched up in, in favorable. Uh, Favorable one-on-one matchup, and then the line protected really, really well against that, that defensive front of Michigan. It was really impressive to watch, um, you know, last night and this morning. So, yeah, yeah, we got our hands full. Yeah, it was like when you were watching, you are like, oh, man, or was it like this will be fun as a coach to deal with this challenge? Well, you know, with us clinching two weeks ago, um, I took the Minnesota week and I watched uh, – you know, the Michigan games after ours. And then as we were preparing for Illinois, I watched all the high State game leading into this weekend. And, you know, after I got done watching Michigan, I'm like, man, I hope we don't play these guys. And then after I got done watching Ohio State, I'm like, man, I hope we don't play these guys. And uh, <laughs> you know, it, was, it was a lose-lose. 
from a schematic standpoint, coaching standpoint, and tab standpoint. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great challenge. Our guys, will, they're going to prepare well, and we're going to go down there and hopefully play our cleanest game of the year and go compete. And, uh, you know, all, all you want is an opportunity. And uh, our guys, obviously, will have an opportunity of a lifetime in front of them here. And, uh, you know, I think they'll be excited for the challenge, and uh, I think they'll get themselves ready. But we're going to have to play clean. We're going to have to execute. We're going to have to make plays. And, uh, you know, we're going to obviously have to find a way to grind it out, you know, because this is as explosive of a team as maybe I've seen on tape uh, in a long, long time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. The next question is from Dan Hope of 11 Warriors. Hi, Pat. You mentioned that, you know, you were able to watch the film of Ohio State and Michigan. How much did it help in terms of getting ready for this week that you guys were able to clinch a couple weeks ago and, and knew that this game would be coming up on your schedule? Yeah, I mean, I definitely tweaked uh, some things that we, we did the last two weeks, um, you know, knowing that, um, you know, this opportunity slash challenge is going to be in front of us. So, John, yeah, I don't know if you guys followed our game very well, but I, I really limited what I, I allowed our coordinators to do this week against Illinois. I took most of our starters out. Uh, pretty early at, uh, on offense and defensively, um, you know, we were we were very vanilla and uh, didn't play some guys that, that were that were, could have played. So, um, you know, just took some calculated risks, I guess you'd call them, knowing that I thought, I, you know, basically what I did is I thought we could win with the talent that we had, and, and, and uh, you know, obviously the guys proved me right, so I'm proud of them for that. But, uh, you know, obviously <laughs> huge challenge this weekend. And what are the things from your team that you feel like you guys really need to fine tune or, or really need to, to do better this week so that you are in a position to have a chance to win on Saturday? Well, you know, I, I think, number one, we're going to have to execute. You know, I, I think then that's where Ohio State puts a lot of pressure on you. They do a great job schematically in all three phases. And, uh, you know, we've got to we've got to learn kind of how we're, how we're going to attack and, and what we're going to do and to try to take advantage of some things. And then, uh, you know, obviously in any, any big game, you know, the football is critical. And so the, we got to take care of the ball and, and uh, you know, we got to really limit, uh, we got, we got to try to find a way to keep the ball inside and in front. I mean, that's what, you know, Ohio State does such a good job making explosive plays offensively that uh, we, we've got to find a way to, to somehow keep it inside and in front. And then the guys that are in the kicking game have got to, Got to get ready to play as fast as a team as fast of a team as we've played all year, and uh, we've got to we got to execute in that phase equally, if not more important. Thanks, Pat. You bet. Have a great week. Your next question is from Team May of the Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Pat. Okay, Follow up on your uh, what you're talking about about Ohio State earlier, but you know, were you I don't know curious or scratching your head about what's been going on? with the Buckeyes, especially defensively this year, uh, as you watch some of the scores, you know, of late, and obviously a team that you guys uh, beat early, uh, Purdue, uh, beat beat this team by 29 points. I know I know a team can get it going on the other side sometimes, and it just snowballed, but uh, have you been a little bit curious, has, has this Ohio State team up until maybe recently been a little bit of an underachiever? I don't know. What, what, what's your take on that? You know, I'd love to tell you that I can spend a lot of time focusing on other squads. Um, you know, our focus is, is, and my sole focus is on us. I mean, I watched some games, you know, Saturday night with my boys, uh, you know, as a fan. But, you know, outside of that, you don't have a whole heck of a lot of time. Um, and when you watch coaches copy, I don't know if you're, you're, you're caring concerns a whole lot about scores, per se, except for understanding situations, you know, different two-minute scenarios and things of that nature. But schematically, you know, Coach Day, Coach Giano, and I know, you know, from a kicking standpoint, Coach Myers is very involved. I mean, they, they put a lot of pressure on you schematically, and and, and uh, their guys typically execute at a very, very high level. And uh, when I popped on the tape, you know, that, that's that's what you saw. And then in some games, they, they some teams played really well. I thought Maryland and Purdue on offense played outstanding. They played really, really well in those two games when I watched the, when I watched the tape. Were there mistakes? Yeah, there's going to be mistakes. I mean, that, that that's college football. Uh, but, you know, I thought both those teams played, you know, lights out. And um, 
was probably more impressive to me was the way that Ohio State responded to both of those. I mean, those those were pretty bold responses on their part, and and to me, that's that's great coaching, and that's 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 great leadership in that locker room. That that's probably what's most impressive to me about Ohio State is maybe the game they, they didn't play very well. Maybe you know you could say against Purdue, you could say against Maryland, maybe, but uh, man, they sure responded boldly in the games after those. Hey, one other quick thing, you know, we've obviously we've asked you this a little bit in some ways uh, the last couple of years, but. You know, if 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 Ferentz is the uh, dean of Big Ten coaches, and you're the provost, probably right. But uh, <laughs> what what have you what have you uh, I don't know what have you definitely gotten better at, learned over the last uh, you know twelve, thirteen years in that seat now that makes you a more I don't know grizzled coach. Is that the right term or whatever you want to call it? Cause, you know, obviously you still have those boyish looks, <laughs> but. Uh, well, where have you where have you seen yourself really grow, just as a coach uh, over over this term from where, from the where you started? How much time do we have on this call? Well, no, sorry about that. No, I mean, it, yeah, no, I mean it's it's endless. I think you're you're constantly learning and evolving your role. Um, you know, I, I think that that never ends. That you, you're trying to pursue uh, the ultimate way to positively influence each young man you coach and each year is a new and daunting challenge. You know, when you got 25% of your roster, you know, that, that graduates every year and 25% new coming in. So, you know, I think I've become more of a leader uh, and, and, and a better manager uh, of, of our staff, of our support staff, of the overall organization. Um, you know, I, I think I've done a better job trusting those around me and allowing them to and supporting them to help them be successful. But most importantly, um, this, this isn't about me here. This is about what we all do collectively. And uh, I just feel very fortunate. I mean, I've had two coordinators with me for a decade. Um, you know, I've got multiple uh, got, you know, guys on my staff. Jeff Janik, our special teams coordinator, coached me in my last game here, and, and we worked together as assistants. I got Lou Ianni and Timmy McGargle, who I coached here. Uh, now back on the staff, you know, Matt McPherson and, and Adam Cushing uh, and, and Bob Hefner and Dennis Springer have, have been with with me for a long time. And, and same thing with Marty Long, my D-line coach. So uh, yeah, I'm just so thankful for that group and for their for their wives and their families and their sacrifice. But for me, what I've learned is I get, I get the privilege to coach the best and brightest young men every day. I feel honored to do it. And I hope I positively influence them to make their lives better and, and they enjoy the process of growing and getting better. And, um, you know, I think that's your, your role as a head coach is, is to do everything you can to develop young people. And that's our staff vision. We want to be the best player development staff that there is in the country. We work tirelessly and relentlessly to do it. And, um, you know, hopefully this now gives, uh, you know, everybody evidence that, uh, you know, our blueprint, it works. You can win championships with it. And, uh, now we obviously got a huge challenge in, in front of us to, to win the, the, the conference, but we've, we've at least, uh, you know, taken that big step of at least for, at first one in the last. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Coach, thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you this weekend in Indianapolis. I'm uh, honored to represent the West, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to come down to Indianapolis. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye. And that completes the Big Ten Football Championship Game Coaches Teleconference. I'd like to thank the coaches and media for joining us today. Just a reminder, three players from each participating team will be taking part in the Big Ten Football Championship Game Players Teleconference tomorrow with Ohio State scheduled from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time and Northwestern from 2.30 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time.